How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar and today I want to show you how to make a ground mount out of a single 4x4 post and just a simple lumber frame. Now most of what we're using here you can get at your local lumber shop and then I'm using two 100 watt panels from Shop Solar which is a great DIY kind of beginner level for projects like this solar shed that we're putting together and we'll have a future video coming out. Now this is a very approachable project just make sure before you set that post and start to orientate it make sure you point and straight south or for like in my instance I kind of went more to the southeast knowing that I had some shade coming in later in the day so I wanted to capture a little bit more of the morning sun because I was going to start to lose the sun a little bit early as some of the trees cast shadows in this area later in the day so I went a little bit more to the southeast just make sure you have that plan of attack before you start setting your posts in the ground but let's go ahead and jump in and start digging the hole. So I'll go ahead and start digging my hole. What I'm going to use an eight inch Sono tube and go down 36 inches to get below the frost line in my area. So I'll start sizing up the Sono tube, making sure the hole's big enough and deep enough. And then once I get past that 36 inches, I will go ahead and cut that four foot Sono tube off to that. So once the concrete is set, it is actually below the surface. Setting that in place, now backfill a little bit and then get the four by four post with two braces. I'll use my torpedo level to kind of level things up and then sink some screws once everything is good in both directions. And then I'm gonna use some quick setting, quick creep bags, 50 pounds a piece. And I used a bag and a half to fill up this tube. I went about four inches below the top and then started to pour in the water. It actually calls out the dry mix and then water on top. In future, I might just do a standard wet mix and then use a ditch shovel to kind of feed it in around that four inch. I think it'll look a little bit better, even though this did turn out still solid and it's gonna easily hold this four by four post. All right, so I got all the dirt cleaned up, everything tamped down. Now I'm ready to actually cut my angle, the angle that I want my solar panels tilted at into this four by four post. And that'll make more sense here in a second when you see the frame that I'm building. But right now I need that exact angle cut in. I'm just going to use the circular saw. I'm going to come from the top with that angle of the blade down, and that is a 30 degree angle. For me, in my area, that is what I want for a year-round angle. There's a better angle, more optimized in the summer, and there's one more optimized in the winter, but for a static year-round angle, that's what I want to set it to. If you need reference for your own location, you can go to our website, and in the tilt angle calculator, you just enter in your address, and you'll get those four different seasons for what the ideal angle is, and then your overall year-round angle if you're just doing a static angle. So let's go ahead and get this cut and then we'll start making that frame. Then if you're a little bit off, which is not uncommon trying to match up those two cuts, you can just use a little bit of a chisel here and take off your high spots, smoothing everything out so then when you put this bracket on, you'll have a nice smooth surface to mount it to. We'll double check. You can use the measurement app on your phone and there is a bubble level on there to get your exact angle. And here you can see we're right at that 29 or 30 degrees, so we're matching up to what I want. So I'll take my diagonals here and get the center point, and that's gonna to reference to the positioning of this bracket. There's a hole right in the middle, so I'll just put the X right in the middle and then start to sink my four mounting screws here to secure it to that post. Now once I get that secured, I'm gonna take my piece, which is, this is the main backbone of the bracket, a four by four post, it's already cut to length. I'm gonna clamp this in place where I want it because I have a middle Point, the midpoint there already drawn out on that post and then I'm going to drill a half inch hole through which will be sinking a bolt through later on but I want this already through prior to making the frame so it's much easier to mount later on. Now once we have that make sure you are oriented in the right direction and I'm just going to sit my two 100 watt panels here flush with the ground and then I'm going to start to build out my frame. 
just using pressure treated two by fours to frame that up. And then I'm going to countersink three holes here in each of the ends so I don't split the ends once I'm driving my three and one eighth of an inch exterior rated screws in to scare everything up. So I just go around using the countersink bit on all three or all four corners, excuse me. And then I'll sink one screw in each of the corners because I want to double check everything to make sure that we are good and everything's squared up. To do that, I'll just measure my diagonals and everything matches up. So I'll sink two more screws on each of these corners to get the frame secured. And then I do need to secure the frame to that middle backbone four x four post. I'll use some four inch exteriorated screws to do that, three on each end. Now I'm a big fan of these DIY projects like the one we're doing today or this EG4 ground mount behind me. But if you're looking to offset your entire monthly power bill and tie into grid, that might be a little out of our skill level or comfort zone. So you might need to call in professionals for that installation. You can start where I started with the link in the description. And that was to get an understanding on the size of the system and also the cost of the system. By inputting your monthly power bill and a few other criteria on your home, within just a couple minutes, you're able to get that estimate so you can start planning for this year or possibly even next year. If that's something you want to go further with, they can also connect you with with local installers to get actual quotes on that system. So let's jump back in and finish off our frame. And then for holding the panels in place, it's nothing really fancy. These are just small little under a dollar 90 degree brackets. I'm putting a stainless steel bolt through those and then a nylon lock nut with a washer on the backside. Then once those are all secured to the solar panels on the mounting holes, then I'll sink two screws a piece. And if you need reference to the lumber and the hardware, just look in the description. You'll see the solar panels there from Shop Solar, but you'll also see the hardware that I picked up just down at Home Depot, and you can pretty much get it at any big box store. But here is what you're looking at. Everything's flush mounted, and you have the two panels ready to go. So I'll take that frame, and I'll go ahead and bring that up to our post. And again, all I need to do is line up that bolt now, and then push that bolt through to get things secured up and mounted so I'm not fighting it trying to get everything mounted. Then once that bolt is through, I will sink additional exterior rated screws and an additional bracket to try to secure that up as much as possible. There will be a little play. Obviously, we only have one post and we have a fairly large frame here, but overall, it's gonna easily hold up to wind in my area. So overall, I'm super happy with the finished product, and I actually did a little wire management on the back too, and installed one more bracket just to sure things up a little bit. Let me know what questions you guys might have in your comments or what you might do differently. Now for some of us, roof mount is gonna make a ton more sense. So check out this video right here. I did a roof mounted system on the detached garage right beside this shed. And that was a system by Snap and Rack called the Top Speed System, which was super quick to install and you didn't have to line up rails. So it was a great DIY project as well. And then we'll be tying together the solar and bringing those MC4 lines into the shed to complete that overall system. So if you wanna see the complete system that we put together to power this shed off grid, check out this video down here. So thanks for joining us on this one and we'll catch you on one of those next videos. Take care.